everybody and welcome to Frozen Sick. We were absent last week because I was at Bush Gardens with the children. Uh, it was a lot of fun. The Loch Ness Monster is still there. It was dope lit. <laughs> yes, dear. It Old was dope Nessie lit. was amazing. I, um, I was a little bit disappointed because the Leprechaun rides were all gone. and I was looking forward to that, but... Loch Ness Monster was still there, and that was the most important part of my life, so, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, fun times were had there, um, and tonight the party will have fun picking up where they left off, which was about to fight a mimic who is very upset that people attacked it. Um, so... I mean, what were they expecting? I don't know. But we can start off the night with the initiative rolls. I rolled mine last time. Do you want me to roll again? Yeah, you can roll again and pick whichever one is better. Okay, let me find me. Remember to click on your character before you make your roll. Yeah. Same exact thing. Cool. <laughs> It was meant to be. Oh, poor Lomiak. Oh, poor, poor Lomiak. He's got to get over his evil undead sea wife. Seriously, suck it up. Sorry, I went to go grab my face. You went to go grab your face? Dice. Dice, okay. I don't know how you hurt face. Did anybody else hear face? I like grabbing I people's face. faces without their consent. N no. No, that is never a good statement to make, my child. Please do not uh, do not infer that I am raising you in an improper fashion to the entirety of the internet. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure any internet people that are seeing this can already infer that that was a joke based off of the fact that you heard face in that. Yeah, but you should never joke about consent. Oh, wait. That's right. I should. I should. Turn on. Alrighty. So, the mimic has sprung to life, um, and uh, is, is, is not at all happy about what's been going on here. Um, and uh, he's just gonna go ahead, and uh, it's gonna be War's turn first. Maybe this stupid mimic should have thought about that before getting on our freaking boat. I think you got on its boat. I, I think what happened here is you got on his boat. So, since I wasn't able to look at the map last time, I have been imagining this barrel standing upright, not on the side with like... And it looks so much more adorable like this because it just looks like a mimic puppy. I know. Here, let me make it bigger for other people to see. Look at this face. Look at this face. This is a that face. That face is the face of somebody who wants to kill you. This is a face of somebody who needs love and belly scratchies. And pets. As well as your flesh. <laughs> yes, as well as your flesh. But anyway, uh... Yeah, War, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to go up to that thing and bash its head. Alright, so there is a, a doorway right there. You could probably get a, get in around a low meak to take a swing at it if you wanted to. 
I'm going to f this thing up. Okay, we'll go ahead and roll for it. Also, are you raging? Gladly. You know what? I will rage. I'm just gonna be so freaking pissed that this thing decided to come on our territory and decide to bother us, so we're just gonna- I'm just gonna- Guys, head in. Yeah, that'll do it. Go ahead and, uh, roll damage. And that'll be plus an additional two for your rage, so that's a grand total of seven damage to him. How's it feel to get your head bashed in? And now, the, now get the flip off of our boat, or else everybody else will bash you. Oh no, cancel culture. Alrighty, so that's seven damage to him as you swing your great axe around the side of a Lomiac, and the Lomiac gets to watch it sink into the barrel mimic skull <laughs> see this is why i need to keep me around because i do all the big hits the ones that matter more oh no it's a mimic i had no idea oh let me exercise Yeah, 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 yuck it up. We already noticed that it's got that extremely sharp teeth, and we gotta murder this mother fricker. Wow, more reasons for Lomiac to hate you. Um, anyway, anything else for your turn? He would be devastated about losing a fellow kin, but, uh, you know, it tried to eat his friend. And enemy. <laughs> Alright, War, anything else for your turn? I mean, I guess I could take steps back, so then it, if it tries eating me, it won't get me. Now, if you take a step back, you will incur an attack of opportunity currently. Um. Alright, then I ain't moving an inch. You cannot, you can't touch this. I am made of solid stone. Okay. Hafu, you're up. Right. Um, so a little meak is still kind of dangling out of the barrel's mouth, right? Yep. I, I just realized that a little meak was saying that from inside the barrel. Um, Havu is going to try to command the mimic. Not knowing if it speaks common or not. Uh, and is going to tell the barrel to, like, spit out a Lomiac. Be like, <laughs> spit. <laughs> spit. <laughs> That's a wisdom oh. saving throw? Yes. What's the DC on that? Uh, it's, uh, 13. Ah, it fails. And it has to take that action on its next turn, correct? Um. Uh... Yes. Or if it doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. Doesn't understand your language. Uh, I. I don't know. That's a good. That's a good point. Let me just roll intelligence on this mimic really quick. Let's see if he understands that language. No, he does not, actually. <laughs> oh. I thought Sorry, he was we were bringing dumb. up the language <laughs> question, so. No, I mean, so? it's a fair question because Alomiak understands, under, understands uh, common. This mimic does not. <laughs> so she just looks at it and goes, Speed, speed him out. Speed him out, drop him. And just is yelling at the barrel. <laughs> It slobbers in response. <laughs> you can't uh, that's talk all she to can a do. Barrel that can't speak our language. Alrighty. Anything else for your turn, Havu? 
No, I don't think I have any bonus actions I can do. Alright, it's the Mimic's turn. It's got a uh, Lomiac in its mouth, so it's gonna bite! A Lomiac does a 15 hit you. I don't think so. Oh. It does? Okay, oh. Okay. Well, you're screwed. You're you're pretty much dead. Well, um, the uh, good news is you don't take the acid damage because you are immune to acid damage. Um, the bad news is you do take the seven piercing damage. As uh, broken spar-like teeth dig into your uh, form. That is that is presenting a lot of disturbing imagery in my head. Yeah, barrels eating people will do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's literally a barrel that looks like a murderous dog. Uh, is part of like a Lomiac getting stuck to this thing now too, or is that just another stat block? Um, so just because of the nature of what a Lomiac is, uh, I don't believe that they would actually be subject to the adhesive trait. Just like they are not subject to the acid damage, considering the immunity here. Um, okay. Cool. So uh, basically, they can't get stuck to themselves. Uh, so, at least not on purpose. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that that is the mimics. That is the mimics' turn. He's only got the the one action, I think. Yeah. Yeah, just the one action. All right, and Fenton, you're up. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Fenton will come down here. Uh, where's the door at? Right here? It's in front of War, yeah. Um, would I have reason if I were to store, I could get an angle out on it? Um, well, you can't see that door currently. Um, because there's a wall. Oh. Yeah, there's a door right here leading to another room. Oh, I didn't even see that. Okay. Um. I don't know why the grid is, like, super heavy. But, um... But question remains the same, do I think? It would do I have a feeling it would uh loop around or I wouldn't. You didn't explore this part of the ship earlier, so you you don't know for sure where that door goes. Okay. Um it's not really much like I see that there as like I can't tell if you're talking and breaking up or if you aren't talking. No, I, I got an idea. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm just envisioning you right now standing on the table. <laughs> um, Same. I'm actually going to run around, so that'll be five. To five. 30, 35 here, weaving through both spaces, because I am actually. So you you uh you are not um. You don't have scurry like uh like the rat people do at Starfinder. I I have halfling nimbleness. You can move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than yours. Oh sweet. Okay, never mind. You yep. scooch all the way over there. I can also even hide behind Panya. Uh, they kind of... But yeah, I'll scooch all the way over there, but because I was... Uh, actually, uh, what do I have? I don't think I have uh, a happening action. Ah, so... That'd be a move, bonus action, and... I... Stop it. 
stops with a uh, rape. Hey, hey, let go of our friends. You shouldn't eat anything raw, and our friends are not food. <laughs> Yet. All right. Go ahead and go ahead and roll for attack. Teen. I'm sorry. Result. What was that? Sixteen. Do you have push to talk on? No. Uh, sixteen. I'm. I was just talking. Hi. Sixteen. One six. Okay. Alrighty. I believe that hits, but let me double check. Yes, it does. Alright, um, and that's sneak attack, alright? Mm-hmm. Alright, so, it's two dice. Six, oh no, uh, uh ten points of damage. You said ten piercing. points total? Yep, ten points piercing. I have any sixes to roll. Alrighty. Is that it for your turn, Fenton? Yep, that's all on my end. Alright, it is now Steven's turn. He's going to see a Lomiac stuck in the mouth of this thing and attempt to uh, do a strength contest with it to try to pull Lomiac out. <coughs> Steven has rolled a 19. Good job, Steven. But what will the Mimic roll with its plus three? <laughs> a 13! So, Alomiac, you promptly uh, and with much snapping of boards pop out of this thing's mouth uh, just in time for your turn, which is next, as Steven kind of looks you over um, bewilderedly. You all right? Olomiak kind of just stands there for a moment. They look down at themselves and sigh heavily. Oh no. I'm delirious. Cannot tell friend from foe. Pick random target. Hope for best. As Olomiak grips the board out of their torso and goes to beat the mimic with it. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Roll a d100, Olomiak. <laughs> Ninety one, huh? Um, oh, 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 what does the world get destroyed? No. Nope. Black what happened? Brother. I gotta know. So remember how remember how Lomiac can eat pretty much anything and not get sick? You remember how you ate that one that spoon yesterday and an entire bowl along with it? Because now there's a hole in the torso. Yeah. If well, it upset Tumbly. It's a very upset tumbly. Um, so, you're going to go ahead and uh, 
you throw up, you're going to take 1d8 of damage from from that because uh, I guess the board was plugging up the hole to your tummy and now everything's coming out I guess so that'll be 1d8 of damage which is only one damage yay um, but then you're also going to be attacking with disadvantage for 1d6 rounds so for the next three rounds you're attacking with disadvantage <laughs> My brain is dead. He rips the board out. And pauses, lurching just before the sway. Before a spoon, mostly splintered pieces of bucket, and a whole lot of other things just come gushing out of the spot, all covered in weird goo. What have you been eating? See Everybody, everything. Don't answer that. It's all right there. And there is no noise until he remembers to make the noise. <laughs> what? That, that was quite a delayed reaction. <laughs> At that well, point, I mean, you do realize, do, do realize you're not supposed to eat the cutlery and bowls and plates with your meals, right? Come on, you aren't my dragonborn who literally ate a mug. Your cutlery, as I end my turn. <laughs> <laughs> War, I <laughs> hear up. I'm just gonna finish this stupid barrel off with, or at least try to finish it off with one good bop to the head or body. I don't think it even has a head. Go ahead and roll to attack. What is with these broken rolls that I'm doing? Yeah, 24 definitely hits, and 4 plus 2 slashing damage is 6 slashing damage. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's not looking too beat up yet, honestly. Mimics are traditionally quite hardy creatures, at least the larger ones like this barrel creature. Um, so he's still got a lot of fight left in him, and he's pretty mad about losing his snack. Anything else for your turn? Undisturbed uh, by what else could I do that is beneficial to me and won't end up killing me later? Uh, well, if you move, you will take an attack of opportunity. Uh, I don't think you have any bonus actions besides raging, which you've already done on a previous turn. So, talking is a free action if you wanted to yell something, but other than that... Just die already, you stupid barrel! I could literally punch your ass to the moon. Steven is confused because the moon is very far away. <laughs> um, anyway. It's called the figure of speech. Hafu, you're up. I was like, hmm. So, Lomiak is not being eaten anymore. I guess I'll need to attack the barrel, um, and I will use a new spell that I have not used yet. Magic Missile. Pew, 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 pew. And that's going to be a grand total of 10 force damage. Now the barrel's looking kind of hurt. And I don't think I can do anything else at the moment, so okay. I'll, I'll say, Steven, you may want to move away from the barrel. It seems to have pointy teeth. It's okay, there's a wall between it and me. I'll be fine. Okay. 
And there is, in fact, a wall between Stephen and the barrel. Um, but, uh, yeah, you fire off your magic missiles. They, um, probably reluctantly slow a zigzag around war to impact with the mimic. Boom, boom, boom. Um, as it staggers from, uh, each forceful hit. And as it shakes itself, you see a couple of rivets, uh, fall off and turn to gooey mush on the floor amongst the debris of Alomiac's, uh, retching. Um, and, uh, it doesn't look, it doesn't look quite as hardy as it did before. But it is upset about it. And it sees the perfect way to regain some health as it turns eyes on Fintan. And, uh, it is gonna go ahead and, uh, launch its tongue at you, Fenton, and try to wrap it around your waist. Does a 21 hit you? Um, it does, but I'm gonna use my second chance, uh, talent and make you re-roll that, but it has to be the whatever's re-rolled, higher or lower. Okie dokie. That'll be another 21. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> you sure did. Um, so, uh, so that's twenty-one uh, to hit. So, since that hits, go ahead and just make a uh, just make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, okay. Ooh, that is a twenty-three. All right. So, um, the, uh, cytopod tongue lashes around you, and you feel the serrated teeth along it actually, uh, rip at, uh, your body a bit. Uh, you take four damage, um, but you manage to kind of, uh, wriggle yourself free so you are not dragged back into its gaping maw. And, uh, that's the Mimic's turn. Fenton, you're up. You just got uh, licked very can't. inappropriately by a barrel. <laughs> yes, I see that. Um. Oh, um. Too late. Or no, I can't eat. I don't have shit, so. Okay. Anyways. Uh. Okay, just make sure. Um, yeah, I will um, see if I can slice at the thing hung before it retracts back into its body with the rapier. And um, uh, rapier is more of a stabby stabby than a slashy. Slash. I understand. I, I know. But like, you still kind of make slash mom movements at, at times with the rapier. I like Do you to, not? I, yeah, I'd like to think canonically that your carrots are the rapier. <laughs> whatever the they are, whatever the, uh, it is. It's a really sharp carrot. <laughs> I figured the carrots are more dagger size, but. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and make your attack. Yep, I'm trying to slice it off. However, I am able to do it. Well, what would you roll? That is a 17 to hit. So 17 does hit. Um, go ahead and roll damage. Let's see what that is first. All right, with sneak attack. Mm -hmm. uh, that is seven. Seven total? Wait, nope, I forgot to add my modifier. Uh, that is 11 total. 11 total? Okie dokie, with 11 total, you do slice off a portion of the tongue as it retracts back in, resulting in an ear-splitting uh, screech coming from the barrel. The barrel better does not look well. You better mind what you do with that, or else I'll get cooked up. You see it turn <laughs> to sludge on the floor after you slice it off. And, um... 
I did not like that tongue doing that, so I'm going to bonus action disengage. Go over. Do you have that yet? Yeah, cunning action, which uh, allowed the dash, disengage, and hide to be a bonus action. Oh, that's level two? I thought that was level yeah. two. Yes. I did it earlier. I feel like I've I... had this conversation before. We, we, we did it today because I had to move 35 feet, which is two movement actions, so dash. And then uh, last session, I think, or two sessions ago. Okie dokie. Alrighty, it's Steven's turn now. And Steven is going to go ahead and lean around the wall to stab blindly at this thing. He has disadvantage because he, he can't really see around the wall. That's a 10. That does not hit. Hello, Mayak, you just see Steven just reach an arm around the wall and just wave his scimitar in the air in front of the mimic over its head by a good, like, foot and a half and then retract it back again. He's like, did I get it? And you're up. It's Hello, Mayak's turn. Is uh, anybody going to say anything? Sives is typing. Or rather, Olomiak is typing. Uh oh. Okay. I will read what they say when they are done. I'll just yell out as I moved away. Watch out, the tongue hurts. There's like little wood barbs on it or something. I don't know. After unleashing probably a plethora of stuff that covers the floor, a disturbing amount of it meat, haha, <laughs> Alomiac, actually delirious now, is going to try to grapple the barrel to immobilize it. Tries to say words, but mostly just a multitude of hisses and gargles come out. That's not freaky at all. And by immobilize, I mean grabbing the tongue and stuff, disable it from attacking. Alright, go ahead and make a contested strength check against it. And if you, I was going to say, if you rage, you have advantage on it. Um, but I did not mean to roll initiative. I meant to click strength. Ah! I think we did say they were raging by now. I know that war was raging. I wasn't sure about Alomiac. Um, it's depression rage. <laughs> Well, a 12 versus a 9, um, you actually do manage to grapple it. Or that works too, you know. Grab it by the tongue instead of avoiding. And, and, and you've got, you've got it grasped by the tongue and it's making slathering noises. <laughs> Ugh, I do not like that. And Alomiac just growls back like... Laura, see if you can chop off the rest of his tongue. Well, guess whose turn With it is. pleasure. It's Wars. 
I'm going to chop this motherfucker's tongue off. Maybe even its entire face, too. Well, if you roll enough, maybe. Um, go ahead and roll that attack. Oh, no. Whip oh. you. Oh, no. They can't all be winners, I guess. You just... You, you, you slash down with your axe, but, like, the tongue is thrashing, and a Lomiac's just hanging on, and they're having a growl competition, and you just, you thunk your axe into the wood right in front of them, uh, instead of into the tongue. To be so yeah, can I join the growling competition? Yep, uh, uh, growling, much like speaking, is a free action. Ugh, you... Oh, Barrel, how about you? Ugh, you stupid sh- Okay, then. Havu, you're up. I was like, you missed war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, in fact, realize that. But another thing I realize is the fact that not everything can be a direct hit. Y you know this, everything is like a roll of the dice. I would just like to pause wow. here, o Ocele, and tell you how proud of how proud of you I am that you are finally not upset when the dice roll badly. Just want to put that out there, Jason. Anyway, back to Havu. So as as War is, is saying this, Havu just kind of stretches out her hand and fires a sacred flame. Just stares at him. <laughs> uh, the barrel is going to make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. That's a seven. And she's like, yes, it's so easy to miss the barrel that is being held down. <laughs> Our life is like a board game. Every single move we make is pretty much almost always at the mercy of a single dice block. Or maybe even dodecahedron, if you want to be technical. Wow, oh, uh, war just got very deep. Um, but anyway, anything else for your turn, Havu? Uh, as you uh, put out your hand, not even looking at it, just staring war in the face, and it goes up in holy fire, letting out an unholy squeal. You're not the only one who could do unholy squeals. Ah! Havu's just looking, and it's just like, can we wrap this up? <laughs> <laughs> it is now the mimic's turn, and it's going to, uh, it's going to say to Alomiac, which so means the other word, complete nonsense. Which which means, how could you betray me like this, brother? Are we not cut from the same cloth? Excuse me, what? This you is don't a weird speak lore mimic. implications. You don't speak mimic. I know, I'm not saying that in character. I'm just remembering back to the earlier conversation between these two mimics. Um... I'm, I can't help but think of just how, like, proper Alomiac speech was, and I'm now thinking of the one Hamilton song. My dog speaks more eloquently than thee. <sighs> or whatever the line was. Not dog, it was... It was dog. What was it? But frankly, the mange is the same. To which Alomiac replies in Mimic, and a large bowl of stew with a crumpet and sways. <laughs> <laughs> Such insults to my propensity. They will be paid for in blood. Or as the rest of you hear. <laughs> oh no, that's a natural one. <laughs> um... The game just totally gave you the middle finger. Normally, I would, uh, 
normally I would roll on the crit fail chart, but I feel like the result of this is he accidentally bites his own tongue off and deals the damage that he was supposed to deal to Lomiac to himself. <laughs> Which is 10 piercing damage immune to the 8 acid damage. Um, but 10 does it. You see it uh, try to lunge at Alomiac and chomp down, but Alomiac sways to one side and instead it chomps down on its own tongue. Um, to which it unleashes a howl of pain and begins thrashing on the floor, its limbs and body slowly losing form and melting into this blob of flesh-toned goo on the uh, on the floor that mingles with all the things Lomiak threw up earlier. And uh, then it is still merely part of the puddle. You are out of combat. Do I have some sort of... Was he about to eat his own barf like a dog? Please tell me he was not about to eat his own barf like a dog. <laughs> okay. But anyway, yeah. Um, Y'all are out of combat. I'm going to try to scoop up some. Sludge. I'm sorry, you're going to try to scoop up some of the vomit mixed sludge? Just not the vomit mixed sludge. Like, I, I would go it's... over here to, like, the backside of. That's where he threw up! That is disgusting! There is no part of this pile that is not vomit touched. And then listen no, to we could that have tried music. to experiment. I'm sorry, Vincent. What did you say? You, you keep getting cut off. Sorry. Uh, you know, we could have tried to experiment with this unexperimented with ingredient or unique ingredient. <laughs> he didn't vomit all over it. It's such a waste. Yes, Fenton is of the mindset everything can be eaten. <laughs> if it breathes, it can be eaten. Oh, if it breathes, it can be cooked. I'm afraid to ask what will happen when Stephen finally dies. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You know what, I just realized that might be a something in the black market of, like, cannibalism. In certain black markets. Steven looks very disturbed uh, by what Havu tells him. Uh, is that the only one? Can we, can we get out of here now? Here, Lomiak, do you need some help? Do I overhear that? Overhear what? Havu is, is not being quiet at all, so probably. She's just like, after you're like, we could have, you know, eaten it or whatever, and she's just looking at uh, Steven is like, I think he's trying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, do you see what this ha what became of these? We don't want to eat these. Do you we had know? a big turtle here we could eat, and you want to eat the, the goo on the floor. Because they're still living in, well, well who, who would try need their bodies. We could get rid of, we could, we could fix that, no problem. And turn around and walks up the steps. Or slithers up the steps. Well, it sounds like you're the only one trying to kill somebody on this boat. Is the one who just attempted to stab and cut off a tongue of the mimic. That was a monster. These are people. <laughs> Is 
Steven is uh, exited stage right with to uh, apparently take, watch over Lomiac as they take a depression nap in a rowboat. <laughs> The, uh, the, the captain uh, looks kind of over the rail at them for a moment as uh, as as you all come out from uh, below decks and says, so is it taken care of then? Yes, it's a little bit of a mess though. Oh, that's all right. We'll get Bob to swab it. Bob! And you see a, uh, what looks like a, a half-orcish gentleman, um, with a very crisp-looking, clean white shirt and, um, nice, uh, well-tailored pants and lovely new shiny boots. And he's got, um, a, a mop and a bucket in one hand. And he's like, ah, finally, I can make use of my cleaning talents he rushes down the stairs and then you hear like five minutes five seconds later oh god oh 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 god what oh <laughs> <laughs> oh it's everywhere oh my boots my boots oh my mom said these would be special Does he look like Mr. Clean? Yeah, he's completely bald. He does look like Mr. Clean. Two big, bushy eyebrows, but they're black instead of white. Abu kind of pats a Lomiak on the head and says, Get some rest! And then is going to go lay down in her cabin thingy, wherever it is. Okie dokie. The rest of the day passes fairly uneventfully. Um, you uh, you kind of uh, relax for the majority of the day. You can go ahead and do a long rest to get your stuff back. Um, Havu, you're just going to take a nap and chill and possibly snoop at walls, I guess, for the rest of the day? Sounds like a plan. Alright. Alomiac depression naps with Steven for the rest of the day? To be fair, Steven doesn't feel all that great either, so he probably does do a nap as well. But he goes and gets all of his blankets and stuff first, because he's starting to get cold again. Alright, um... I might also take a nap. Warg, you're gonna take a nap too? Imagining yeah. just Havu poking her head out of the, uh, out of the door, just commanding him while he's asleep. <laughs> I was thinking of actually pulling a Jigglypuff oh, and getting a pen and just drawing a, like I a mustache on his face. <laughs> that would be hilarious. And, uh, Vincent, what are you gonna do with the rest of your day? Uh, I forget, was the whole, uh, falling overboard this morning? Yes. Same day? Uh, actually, no, it was yesterday morning, technically. Okay, just making sure. Oh yeah, because we. Oh yeah, same day. Uh, and then he's gonna go spend the day cooking and helping out with uh, Pixie. Alrighty, go ahead and just roll me a uh, cooking utensils check to see what you guys whip up. Mm, me. That was a do 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 do. It's just, uh, dex plus proficiency, correct? Mm-hmm. And, okay, so that is going to be a 15. 15? Okie dokie. So you go in, um, and Pixie, she's already in the middle of, uh, chopping up some carrots and, uh, potatoes. Uh, looks like she's going to make a fa fairly rudimentary stew. Um, 
but you saw that giant pile of vomit in the hold and you decide oh hey you know it would be great and everything but the kitchen sink stew and pixie's like oh yeah and you guys just raid the pantry and by the end of it it smells pretty good but it does look like somebody threw up in a pot it tastes delicious though um and while i'm cooking i was like so apparently there's a mimic downstairs and we ended up killing it but and it turned into this like like this weird scoop or this slot like slime oh, no. you killed james Oh, is he your pet? Oh, no, he's my garbage disposal. Oh. Apparently the captain didn't know him to take care of it. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't tell her. He only eats a couple of crewmates every voyage, though, so I thought it was fine. Ah. Uh, did not realize that. But anyways, sorry about your garbage disposal. Um, it's all right. I'm sure another one will sneak on the boat eventually, and I'll name them James too. <laughs> um, but anyways, turned into this like slime, and I tried to pick it up, but there was vomit mixing. But like, mm -hmm. I'm not the crazy one for trying to experiment. Ingredients, right? Um, I wouldn't say that trying to experiment with ingredients is crazy. But the ethical harvest of said ingredients needs to be taken into consideration, don't you think? Well, yeah, but I figured this was a typical request to kill a monstrous creature. But are your weapons sanitized for food grade safety? That's the real question. Fair. That is very true. Though I do my web uh my I usually keep knives. Should should have been using snack. You're cutting out, Vincent. Should have been using my knives. Uh I keep those really yeah, I keep my knives really clean, but I should have been using those. So good point. I'll be doing that in the future. Right just gotta be prepared for the proper harvesting of ingredients. <sighs> That's why I am never without my knives. She just opens her chef's coat and you see like fucking 20 yes. different sized knives there. And just like, they're just like dangling. You can definitely see some strapped to her arms. There's a meat cleaver that's like uh, you can just see the uh, handle like peeking around her back. But nice. anyway, you guys make a really nice um, garbage pail soup for everybody. <laughs> it is delicious, but it looks atrocious. <laughs> Alrighty. Who is wants it like to black? Is it? That's what counts. So Tell it... me it's like black. Oh no, no, it's better. Uh, it's brown in some places, green in others, and there's like this weird kind of almost greasy looking orange ooze in a couple of spots that pops bubbly just pippity poppity for a moment I was thinking one of the dishes that appeared on Food Wars it, uh, that looked horrifying but it was actually pretty decent it is absolutely uh, scary so ends day six Day seven begins. Uh, who wants to roll the dice to find out your fate? Hello, <laughs> Miak? Curse us. Curse us. <laughs> what is with these broken... I say they're really good or really bad. rolls. Wow. 
and the boat sinks in the night. <laughs> Possibly. I gotta know what happened. <laughs> then the world blows up. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. Um... <laughs> So you guys are sailing along, and um, the skies are fairly clear, um, except for behind you where you've come from. Uh, you notice throughout the day that uh, a couple clouds are gathering back there. They don't seem to pursuing you, but they do result in a uh, very brisk wind catching the sails of your ship, um, which means that you are actually going at about double the time that you normally would and you actually cut off about uh, an entire day's worth of travel. Um, uh, in So you get two days of travel out of just one day uh, with the, uh, the, the very strong headwind that you have caught that sends you almost skipping over the waves uh, ahead of this storm that rolls away behind you to the, uh, the southern hemisphere. Um, so, yeah, um, the captain seems in very high spirits because even though the rest of this voyage has been absolutely fucking awful, it's going to get done a day earlier than you thought it would. Um, it was already going to be a day earlier from yesterday, too, right? Mm -hmm. Which means uh, you guys actually don't need to roll another dice um, because Ooh. you see as you are slowly uh, waking up the next morning uh, after this this nice fast quick day uh, the uh, head headwaters of a small well not small actually it's pretty pretty large for you for looking at it a uh, ice covered island in the middle of the ocean um, you can see a small jetty jutting out of it um, just barely in the distance as your uh, ship starts making for it to port. And um, you can see the glow of uh, several uh, tents and fires in the uh, in the receding uh, darkness of the morning. And you guys have actually made it to to the uh, to the island. I <laughs> I had actually planned for there to be another day's worth of stuff, so I don't have the map ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was not expecting that. So, I, I know it's quite early, and I would planned to go on until 10, but if it's okay... You want to circle around the island for funsies? <laughs> sure. I'm surprised you didn't let us roleplay this day and create another encounter for you ourselves. Know what? <laughs> That's fair. We're going to rewind a little bit just to see how badly you can fuck this extra fast day up. So, Havu, you wake up in the morning to these lovely headwinds and the captain in very high spirits from the good time that you are making. Uh, what, what are you going to do for the day? He's going to listen for gossip. See what's going on. See what mischief she can she can get herself into. So, um, let's see, 17. Uh, so as you're kind of listening around for gossip, you hear two bits. Two bits. The first bit is that uh, you hear that there is a creature um, that lives on uh, the... Uh, icy island that you're heading towards which is actually uh, pretty pretty indigenous to the northern hemisphere uh, that actually uh, breathes uh, molten molten lava that is is hotter than what you find in a volcano it lives under the ice and hmm. it's very dangerous but it leaves behind uh, on the walls of the tunnels that it digs out a uh, very valuable uh, substance used to make alchemical potions and you hear that there are quite a decent number of them where you're heading 
Hmm. The second bit that you hear um, is that Bob, the cleaning boy, um, may have uh, may, may have thrown up in the hold more than he cleaned up in the hold yesterday. And that, nobody that makes her giggle. There. <laughs> nobody should go down there. <laughs> All right. War, what would you like to do with your day? What I w would like to do with my day is just sit here and think about the whole mimic situation. Okay. So you sit down and you start. Oh, thinking. wait, I could go check if another mimic is downstairs. That's a good idea. Yeah, you could totally do that. So you go ahead and you make your way down the stairs to the hold. And uh, go ahead and just roll investigation for me. With a 17, uh, you're looking around, you come across uh, a kind of half-dried puddle of things that no one wants to think about um, where the mimic had been. Uh, but as you're looking around, you discover uh, that there appears to be a, a panel in the woodwork right here, actually, in this room that uh, doesn't match the rest of it. Uh-oh. It looks just slight. Say, do I roll again to make sure it's not a mimic? Um, no, you don't think with a 17 that it's a mimic, but it does look like it opens. I mean, you know what else opens? A mouth. It's true, but it looks more like it might be a hidden door. But you know what it also exists? Door mimics. That is true. War is just going to see mimics everywhere for the rest of his days. Not Except for his companions. <laughs> um... But anyway, yeah, you, f you find what you think is either a door mimic or a secret door. Hey, everybody, I found a secret door here. I think it might be interesting. I just also want to make sure it ain't a mimic. Let me look. <laughs> She's very interested in secret doors. And she was just hoping that war would fall into the puddle of vomit, so she's completely content. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you find a you find a door. Um, you can see that the outline is just slightly different from the wall around it. It doesn't appear to have any kind of open handle or string or anything that you can pull. It seems to be uh, with if it hadn't been for war's really nice in inspection there. Uh, you probably wouldn't have even noticed it. Uh, it's just a panel on the wall. Alomiak doesn't care because war found it. He's being extremely petty after a depression nap. Going through the stages of grief, you know. He folds his arms in the rowboat and grumbles, remaining horizontal. <laughs> and she tried to cry it open the with... That I destroyed uh, whatever that thing thing was a dagger I mean you can't see him you're downstairs he's in a rowboat upstairs anyway um, you're going to try to pry open with a dagger yes go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check hey could you maybe I'll, if that doesn't work maybe take my credit card they don't have credit cards in this game darling um, so with, I know, I know. With a 13, you manage to get the tip underneath 
uh, this tiny little line that marks the uh, the spot between it, and you kind of you just barely can't get it though. It seems like there's some kind of trick to it. Can I try to figure out what the trick is? Yep, you want to roll investigation? I must try harder. <laughs> it, it, that it is AFK. It is a. Uh, it is impossible. It is. It is a a, a. a bastion of its secrets, and it cannot be breached. Not with four, anyway. Amanda will not work because it does not speak common. Hmm. Then I will try guidancing myself and s trying the dagger again. Okie dokie. And what did you say, sleight of hand? Mm hmm. Probably did not do any better. 1d4. Roll 1d4. Ah! 16! Yep, so this time you take the tip of the dagger and you kind of run it along the uh, the line where the wall meets wall. Um, kind of just with the tip underneath until near the very top, near where one of the uh, studs was, you hear a click. And then the door opens. What is in it? So, uh, you see a couple of things. There's a couple of uh, boxes that are on the ground. They look uh, like they are currently uh, mostly empty, except for like a few scrapes of uh, some kind of odd black-looking powder that has a heavy, pungent scent. Um, and you also see a weapon rack that only has uh, two things left on it. There is what looks like a short sword and uh, what looks like a uh, slingshot. All right. She is. Am I able to use a short sword? Uh, that's a martial weapon, right? Mm -hmm. Or no. an elven one. So I go over and do they look magical? I do an arcana check. You're not sure. There's a smell in this room that's distracting you and you keep sneezing. Okay, I put the sword and the slingshot in my bag and try to open a box. Alrighty, you put the sword and the slingshot into your bag. And uh, you reach to a box and you open it and that pungent aroma just becomes all the stronger. It is filled with a coarse uh, black powder. This is probably flammable. Can I put some in like a little bottle and then leave the room? <laughs> Sure. You go ahead and you take a tiny flask and you scoop some of it into it and stopper it. And uh, do you do you replace the panel? Um, I say, Ward, go ahead and look in the room and walk up the steps and let him All deal right. with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go check this out. Alrighty. Don't tell me you didn't have a map prepared for that. So, uh, no, the, 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 you're on the map for it already. Um, oh. So Havu abandons you to go upstairs. And uh, you're going to look in the room as well? Alright, yeah. You see a weapon rack that is now devoid of all items, and a couple of boxes, one of which has been opened and is filled with a coarse black powder. Is that gunpowder? You don't know. 
I want to I want to look into that more. Can All I right. roll investigation? Um, this will be a, a nature check, I think. All right. Yeah, that's wow. That's definitely gunpowder. Like for cannons, for sure. Huh, you know, for somebody who doesn't specialize in nature checks, I did pretty well there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is definitely an entire box of gunpowder. Hmm. I guess this ship used to have cannons on it. But what's in that other box, though? You want to open it and find out? Yes. Alright. You open the other box and you find more gunpowder. You have found the uh, armory. I thought it would be something good. No, you found the armory and gunpowder storage locker. Screams up, up the stairs. Hey, everybody! I found gunpowder in an empty well. Weapon rack. Just you, thought it would be interesting to point out. You hear several step foot uh, footsteps coming down the stairs at a hurried pace, and there's two sailors there who are kind of looking uh, both annoyed um, and, and 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 a bit and a bit surprised. And they're like, "That's our armory. You need to stay out of there." Oh. Uh, didn't look like it was being used. Well, yeah, we hide the gunpowder in there in case we get boarded. We don't want people stealing our gunpowder so we can't man our weapons. I mean, we've got no use for it. Well, maybe, but you're the one in the room, man! I just wanted to see what kind of other stuff was around here. The main reason why I came in here in the first place was to make sure no more mimics were around. Well, the gunpowder's not a mimic, man. Oh god, a gunpowder mimic. <laughs> <laughs> what would a gunpowder mimic be like? I don't know, but I'm definitely gonna design one after this. <laughs> <laughs> I have given- you have given ideas, Rob. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, no, I'm just gonna go back upstairs, cause Can you do I that? only came in here for, in I only came here for investigational purposes. Well, stop investigating stuff that's clearly part of our ship. <laughs> I mean, that barrel was clearly part of your ship, and yet, that thing needed to be investigated so we could kill it. And one of the mumbles, I'm still not sure that you guys just didn't throw up in the hold and blame it on a mimic that doesn't exist. I'm sure your face doesn't exist. Whatever. Um, so they close up the, they close up the armory as you leave it. So, uh, so, yeah, I found an armory. Just typical Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Oh. I got time wrong. <laughs> um, hello, Miak. What would you like to do with your day besides, uh, pout about war? Not commit breaking and entering, that's for sure. <laughs> War, the resident criminal. Oh, get off. I mean, to be totally fair, I did admit to. to murder to the police. Yes, War, our resident criminal. 
I mean, I was even wanted at some point. And you probably still are. Or the criminal that tell, turns him, well, tells on himself and then runs away. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea telling people that I committed murder would cause a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally my handiwork. Wait, um, no, 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 not, not. <coughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, uh, probably just taking the day to repair themselves and finish whittling new ores, like promised. My handiwork, but not my handiwork. War, probably. Um,. So yeah, go ahead and just uh, roll me uh, roll me sleight of hand. See how you're doing with making them more slow me act. Pretty good. You make pretty decent progress, especially uh, since you're whittling ores out of other integral parts of the ship. Um, but anyway. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, you've got an entire or and a half done by the time the day is over. Steven kind of shuffles out in his blanket mound every once in a while from the kitchen just to check on you and bring... Shambling you... Steven. Shambling <laughs> Steven. Um, and he, he, brings you, he brings you food every once in a while, this time not giving you silverware after you threw it all <laughs> up yesterday. Um, and, you know, just, just making sure... You're okay. Being an excellent platonic husband, slash, um, probably <laughs> Stockholm syndrome person. <laughs> 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 you are a pet now. Steven is a beloved pet. <laughs> so do you, anyway, uh, Fenton, what are you, uh, what are, what are you doing with your day? So outside of being in the kitchen with Pixie, which he will be doing. Uh, I imagine, like, earlier in the day, uh, either right before war went down to the hold, or, um, like, as he was down there, so, uh, he would try to be keeping out eye for Havu and go talk to the captain about Havu and how Havu is getting concerningly, um, violent towards other people on the ship. Alright, so, uh, Havu, uh, when you see Havu go downstairs as War yells something from the hold, which presents you with a prime opportunity to go talk to the captain since she's not up top. Hey, uh, cat, uh, and because he's still trying to be a little bit, like, sneaky about it, maybe accidentally sneaks up on the captain. And I, hey, Captain. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. What is wrong with all of you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, Pelor like fucking sun god. Thing. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to create that. But, uh... <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Bleh. In character. Ah, ah, oh. Didn't mean to scare you there. Um, uh, uh, I wanted to tell you about how she's been concerning. Oh, uh, yep. No, I, I know what you're going to say, and I completely agree. Especially constantly talking about war as turtle soup. Um, Who knows what else about, she's thinking. I was more thinking about all the things she said about snakes. Snakes? Oh. Huh? Yeah, she I am misunderstanding the situation right now. Uh, yeah, she's, she won't shut up about snakes. Snakes this, snakes that, snakes master race. I just... 
Ah, I can't hear any more of it anymore. I'm going to go. Oh! Insane. Oh! Oh! I thought you meant that she would be interested in cooking them just like she wants to cook war. Oh my god. Well, according to what she said, yeah, some snakes me. are cannibalistic, so I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, now that you say that, that might explain a lot, and now I feel like we should all worry. Well, you know what? You know what I'm worried about? Getting you fucking lot to port turning around and never thinking about this week again. That's what I'm worried about. Thanks, well... I've tried to help, and I don't try to cause a problem. I understand others. I... And also, is this how every voyage goes? What the hell has been this no. week? No, I'm, I'm putting the blame squarely on your shoulders. I, I don't know what it is about the lot of you. Well, this has been the worst voyage of my life. Worst. Absolutely worst. Maybe it's your ship. This has been the worst week of my life. Yeah, no, I don't think it's the ship. I don't don't think it's the ship would venture to say it's it's internal forces and not external ones well just wanted to give you the heads up I don't know how much longer I thought we would have been there by now but I wanted to give you the heads up about Havu because after the past two days and how she's been uh, I I don't I don't know. Uh, to be quite frank, uh, the lot of you, with perhaps you and the one who always covered in blankets, scare the living piss out of me. So, um. Uh, you cut out there. Uh, she said, to be quite frank with you, besides you and the one who's always covered in blankets, uh, the lot of you scare the living piss out of me, and I will be. Very happy when you are no longer my problem. Okay. I, 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 I can accept that. The others are crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you have a really good chef. And I was wondering if, uh, if I have nothing else to do. If I could join one day. Just you? Oh, God, yes. I don't want to stay around those crazy people. Ah, uh, mate. Mm. All right. So, the fact that you associate with the crazy people is kind of a point not in your favour. Um, but uh, I'll make you a deal. If you can make sure that none of them, I don't know, accidentally get us all killed between here and there, I will consider your application on a temporary mercenary basis in the future until it's proven that you're not a bad luck charm because I don't know which of you is bringing all this but uh I can't afford to have it on my ship whichever one it is but at least I know I'm not one causing problems no, not purposeful problems. Except for the sneak it up a wee bit. You might want to not do that. Oh, I didn't want to have a mess, haven't you? You've seen her sneaking around, haven't you? Or just the sneak? By this time, Hava, you'd probably be back on deck. <laughs> and I see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like how uh, Havu and hello, like ah! <laughs> this is how it goes. I can see what's happening here. <laughs> Wait, the way my, the way my head cannon just did it is like, you've seen Havu, right? Yes, and then both of us go ah! <laughs> Suddenly, the captain just stops talking to you. Her <laughs> eyes go wide. She's tight-lipped, and 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 her 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 tanned features are turning uh, deathly pale. Fitton. <laughs> She's staring off somewhere above your head. 
I look above my head or behind. I I look behind me. You meet the staring, uh, golden eyes of a snake person. Ha! Look at. We're we're talking about you, obviously. I know you. you uh, as you just heard, did you not? I don't know what did I hear. Um, that is DM, a wonderful I question. <laughs> kind of a. Uh... So, uh, what you would have heard, Hafu, with a twenty-five perception as you were coming up the stairs <laughs> and then back onto the uh, the deck. You were. Right. I, I I was I was kind of doing like a hush, not maybe whisper whisper, but just That's like a hush a conversation. Natural twenty. That's a natural twenty for a total of twenty-five perception. Okay. I, I didn't know if it could be slightly opposed. So, um, so, so what you heard, Havu, as you were coming back on the deck of the ship, because you were down there for a bit, um, uh, as you came back to the deck of the ship and took a look around, you did hear, uh, Fenton talking to the captain about him possibly joining up with the ship after... Uh, after a, a while and she uh, proclaimed that she wasn't sure about that and that at least one of you was probably bad luck and that it could only be on a temporary basis uh, until she figures out that you're not bad luck or rather that Fenton's not bad luck and uh, then you did hear something about uh, her saying and you shouldn't sneak up on people and then you heard Fenton say well, what about Havu? Havu's always sneaking around, and that's that's the point where you've already snuck up behind him. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you're a sneaky snake. I was talking about how you're a sneaky snake. Of course, we are very sneaky people. Thanks. It is part of our charm. So charming. Remember, I told you about the different oh. snakes and. Yep. The <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 I, 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 I remember every single word. It will haunt me to the day that I die. Um. Yep. Every, every single word I do, I remember. <laughs> Could I don't not... know if I told you all about it, Fintan. I don't think you were there for the conversation. Oh, you should totally, um, you should totally take him back to, um, your rooms and have it there, away from everyone else. It's better as a one-on-one -on -one session, don't you think? You know, you know what? I actually do think I hear Pixie asking for my help again, so I will have to take a rain check. I'm sure it's Pixie would love you to hear all. about it too. <laughs> <laughs> With a 25 perception, Pixie's not calling you. She's talking to, <laughs> saying somebody else's name. They're talking about, um, uh, what is it? Uh, the, the gentleman who plays the harpsichord. They're talking about his band. <laughs> uh, oh, um. Yeah, it's called see, the that, that's actually a, that See that? That's a happy saying. Um, it's a lot of people get confused by it. Uh, I should better see what she needs. That's a 14 insight, Fenton. Against, uh, against your deception. What's your deception? Uh, let me see. Um, Ow. Come on, there you are. Oh, that is a 16 on the die for. I don't remember what you said she rolled, so. Deception. 19. Yeah, uh, he, he's telling the truth, Havu. Hmm. I might need to watch these halfling interactions and learn some more about your behaviors. Let's go find a pixie, and kind of takes him by the shoulders, and they walk across the ship. Oh man! Benton is now terrified. The captain is relieved that at least one of these things is not her problem anymore. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Captain. Oh no, that's all right. I think I've ho hold enough uh, knowledge for a lifetime now. I couldn't possibly learn a single thing more. 
And if I did, I might forget something that you've already told me, which I'm sure was already very important. Then we'll just go over everything again to make sure you remember it all. No, nope, no, nope, my brain only has so much room, dear, so much room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Finden, you said you were going to teach me the, the language. The one that you were using with Steven. I would love to learn some of that along with the halfling information. Oh, see, that, that's going to take time, and it's already, we're already halfway through the day. Okay, we can travel together for a long time, it's fine. <laughs> You're never leaving me, Fintin. Not until I learn. Either that or you die from that crab. I mean, the one or the other. She still thinks you're gonna die from that crab. <laughs> no, I, uh, you, 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 crab. you do sound so sure about that. I could die tomorrow. Uh, though, it looks like Steve might have more time than me if you're about, since I touched that crab, it's probably best to learn from him. Well, I will have him later, but I want to learn about this stuff from you and about the halflings. You said that there are these sayings. I need to uh, write this down. <laughs> so she walks into uh, Pixie and goes, Pixie, I am going to observe you and Fintan and learn your ways. Don't mind me. And she just kind of sits in the corner with her notebook. Uh, Pixie's like, oh, all right, that's fine. Yes. Um... I'd love to mo learn more about these phrases about the harpsichord. What? <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, I understand it is a secret thing between the halflings. I am just here to watch. She looks at me. Yeah, right no, uh, Hava was saying she overheard you from across the ship. You were talking about the harpsichord, and, um... Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, so they've got a band, uh, the Wailing Kettlefish, and supposedly they're gonna play in Neverwinter someday. <laughs> and what does that mean to you, Finton? See, uh, Wailing Kettlefish, isn't, isn't that a, uh, a halfling band? Um... No? No? Oh, I thought, I thought that was a halfling band. I mean, that... he's a human, so... Hmm. Maybe I got confused then. I don't know. Uh, I... Okay. Or, or no, or, or, uh, and then he thinks, it was like, uh... Oh, oh, uh, I forget the common phrase for it, but, and then goes into halfling, I was like, I'm bullshitting my ass out right, I'm bullshitting my ass right now, and, um, the, I was talking to the captain about Havu, Havu overheard, and now Havu, Havu kind of scares me now, it's hey, like, Havu. I think she wants to, he, remind oh. me what your languages are. <laughs> um, my languages are... Common, Dwarvish, Elvish, Draconic, and Abyssal. Ah, uh, okay. okay. So you don't uh, have uh, <laughs> You're still fucking No, up. but I gave Rob a little bit of a heart attack there, didn't I? <laughs> yes. Good, that was my intention. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a few years of improv. I can roll Gosh. with it. Um... So, uh, Pixie just looks increasingly confused by all of this, and she's like, well, what's, what's wrong with Havu? And she says it in, in, in Halfling. Um, well, after the past two days, I think she's not necessarily against cannibalism. And then when I went to talk to the captain, uh, apparently Havu was telling the about, captain about all, all these snake facts and that there are cannibal snakes, and I'm now starting to think that she's a cannibal snake. What's wrong with cannibalism? When we're... F I don't want to be food. I want to make... F well, I don't want to be food either, but, like, have you ever tasted yourself? You're probably delicious. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, no, she, she, she... And also, um... You know how snakes just swallow things whole while they're still living? I don't want that to be me when, when I'm asleep. Oh, yeah, that would be terrible, because if they swallow you whole, they won't really get a good taste of the flavors, you know? 
Exactly. You gotta chew your food and savor it. If you just swallow somebody whole, how are you supposed to enjoy the different flavors? If Hoffman could we turn hear... this conversation back to common. Oh, you yeah, haven't I'm talked sorry. with these other languages yet. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, That's yeah, my sorry. bad. We were just talking about how cannibalism can be fun. It is true. Excuse it is me, true. What now? <laughs> <laughs> Though I will say that cooked food tends to have more flavor. I know, right? But that doesn't mean you couldn't cook people. It is true. I have, yet to, I have yet to find any samples of human, but I've heard human is surprisingly delicious. Oh, I've had human. Oh? How is it? Eh. Kind of oversaturated with kind of icky byproducts. and I just don't. It's not my thing. The, the one thing, uh, out of character, sorry, one thing I was thinking of is how a contestant on Iron Chef or one of the Gordon Ramsay shows actually used human in one of their dishes. He what? Yes, this is a thing Did on the internet. Did you get arrested? <laughs> um, they were disgusted. I don't know the rest of the story, though. Okay. They were very disgusted because, like, a secret ingredient thing. And they revealed that the secret ingredient was human. But I'm sorry to sidetrack. Oh, wow. Um, but anyway. They were saying, the judges were saying the dish was good, though. Oh, dear Lord. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Pixie does not seem to have any problems with cannibalism as long as uh, you are ethical in your cooking and killing methods. <laughs> yes. It's just more so Benton is not comfortable with Hava right now and is trying to shake but her off. But you're comfortable with the cannibal halfling. Uh, well, it's not that far wow. off of Benton. It's not that, it's no. It's because it's she's actually... pretty, isn't it? <laughs> no, and she also... him whole. It's also, that, that actually, yes. Uh, yeah, that'd do it. The unblinking stare might contribute as well. But no, literally earlier, it was like, everything is edible. <laughs> Something Fenton literally said. It, he did. He did. He did, which is why I was so confused that he was worried about Havu wanting to eat war. Because it was unethical, and that was just the terms that I was not coming to my mind earlier ah, in see. previous sessions. Okay, um, but anyway, yeah, so, uh, you guys are in the kitchen, uh, you're gonna be, uh, cooking up a treat then? Yes. Alright, go ahead and roll for sleight of hand. Let's Give see what you me make. a treat. Oh, sleight, uh, that is going to be a 14. 14? Okie dokie. Since uh, since this conversation has come up about uh, Wait. cannibal snakes, uh, Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, you said sleight of hand. Oh, sorry. I meant I meant cooking utensils. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Then yeah, fourteen. Cool. I have uh, expertise in sleight of hand. That would be sixteen. Well, if you want to use that again, you can. Uh, want to use that next time, you can. Okay. Cool. Alrighty. So anyway, um, since you guys were talking about cannibal snakes, uh, Pixie has the idea that you guys should totally make barbecued eel. Um, so she brings out um, a bucket that she's been keeping in the back with a lid on it, and when she opens it, you can hear uh, a sloshing sound as it, is, as it is full of live wriggling eels. And um, you guys go ahead and push her and uh, kind of uh, barbecue them, turning them over the cooktop and drizzling them with uh, sweet, sweet juices. And uh, she makes a nice uh, bit of uh, fried rice and fried noodles to go with them. It's kind Before of like Before you kill the eels, mm -hmm. Havu wants to try snake friendship on the eels and see if, they, if she can understand them. She's never tried it before. Um, well, eels actually are not 
snakes. Can she you wants to try it. Okay, cool. It's ahead. not going to work, but she's going to try it. All right, you attempt snake friendship on the eels. Um, and you feel like it's kind of an alien... Well, it says beast. It says... It does not say... That it, it this is a, an animal friendship, but only on snakes. Oh, okay. So it's specifically snakes. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah. Their mind feels a little bit alien to you. Uh, it's not quite what you were expecting, and you just can't make the connection. Eh. I'm just I imagining... thought maybe they were smart enough to be like snakes, but they're not. Okay, you can kill them. No, I'm more so imagining you stared at this eel, and the eel's just doing that dead, open gape, uh, or open mouth stare back at you, like, <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, yeah, you you and uh, Pixie make some nice barbecued eel with fried rice and noodles. There, I change it to say snake. Sneaky snake. But yeah, it turns out it turns out pretty well. And as you uh, do that, Havu, I assume you're watching them the entire time. Of course, and in some cases, maybe you don't even realize she's there because for an hour she was a uh, advantage on on s sneakiness, and she's just sitting in the corner still. <laughs> See, what happens there is that uh, Stephen shuffles in on one of his jaunts to get warm by the uh, the the little uh, brazier that's in there, the one that you're sitting next to, which is his normal spot. And he shuffles in, scoots past Fenton, and. Um, Pixie, and he goes to sit down, and he sits down, and he's directly next to you, like mere centimeters from your face, uh, almost cheek to cheek, and then he slowly turns his head, meets your gaze, freaks the fuck out, like, ah! Gets up and runs out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steven! No! Nope. I, I, he's being silly. I have mastered the art of stealth. <laughs> Whatever the dr the Drax quote is. Oh no, I have mastered the art of st so perfect still that I have become invisible. Uh, Drax is just space grog. Changed my mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So, uh, you guys have a, a pretty nice uneventful day, and thanks to that lucky roll earlier... You double time it, so uh, the next morning you're going to wake up in the wee hours of the still dim dawn to see the approaching and encroaching islands and to hear the captain sigh with absolute relief that she will soon be rid of you all. <laughs> and uh, that's where we're going to end it for the night, mostly because I did not prepare the next map yet because I thought just from previous circumstances that you would have dragged this out for another few weeks. <laughs> well, we literally turned oh, the entire and session into in roll up. In... <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks everybody out there who was watching tonight. Um, sorry about the long hiatus, but I, I went on vacation. Um, you can catch us uh, possibly tomorrow for uh, the Icewind Dale campaign. Um, and you can definitely catch us on Friday for dragons, also maybe dungeons. From those of us here on uh, the Frozen Sick uh, one-shot stream, thank you and have a great night. Bye. 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 And also make sure a barrel doesn't eat your ass off. Treat your barrels well, people. Treat your barrels well. Good night.